Giovanni, our, our HIV patients are getting older and are getting sicker. So how should we approach the new care, uh, the current care of the patient with HIV? Well, Waldo, thank you, in, first of all, for inviting me in this uh, very interesting uh, convention here in Argentina. And uh, I'm very excited to see how many people, and especially young physicians, taking part of that. I think your question is really important because actually what we are facing is the fact that we need to change the way we care HIV patients. So far, of course, our primary objective was to be able to reach the 90-90-90 goal. And actually, still a lot of works need to be done so that to obtain the success. But actually, at the same time, while we reach it, and even beyond, when already most of our patients will be above uh, the 90% of them being undetectable, our care is not ended. Actually, we know that the 90-90-90 paradigm just explain us that nowadays HIV care is the care of a chronic condition. Chronic condition is that we need to think that the ultimate goal of our patient is not just survival, but the quality of their survival. And so we need to have a new, let us say, clinically meaningful endpoint to be taken both in our research, but especially in our clinical activity. And so if people will live longer, we need to understand how they will live a happy life, how they will be able to experience, let us say, a successful aging process. So we always think that aging is something bad. Actually, aging can be something very good and we need to work so that our people may experience successful aging. And so the way in which we need to moderate it is really to think that above viral load control there's uh, the assessment and the screening of comorbidities. But even if comorbidities are present, even when uh, multimorbidity are present, actually we still to think that people can live well, can age successfully, even with comorbidities. The ultimate goal is really to prevent disability. And actually there are some intermediate steps we can look for so that to assure our patients may have the best treatment, the best benefit for avoiding disability. This is in the recognition of physical function decrease and eventually the identification of frailty. You see, frailty is a reversible condition. If you can recognize when a patient at a certain age across this frailty window, you can do something to reverse it. Some issue may be related to drugs, prevention of, of drug, of prevention of a chronic condition, but also try to engage the patients in a better lifestyle. And we know for sure that stop smoking, better diet and physical activity are key paramount important to reduce the risk of uh, disability. And so the point now is to put it into, let us say, a clinical perspective. We need to think that not all the patients are the same. We need to stratify patient risk and have a more personal way to take care of them. There are patients that really need very little let us say, health, healthy, healthy activity, other are really very vulnerable. And so the issue is that not all the patients should do the same things when they come to us, not all the patients should come at the same time point, but really have, and uh, let me say, have a frailty as a measure so that to identify patient vulnerability and risk so that to use it in a personalized way to take care of them. Thank you so much.